I have a 30-minute video that shows the uh, operation of our ACT team. It shows uh, you know, Cheryl's team in Brooklyn, some of you know her, um, and it shows like a 36-hour day. And if you look at the fidelity standards for the ACT team, all of those uh, sort of checklist things are covered in this video, all the fidelity standards. And what I hope comes across is this other stuff we've talked about that isn't um, really part of the standard, uh, you know, substance abuse and mental health treatment fidelity scale for ACT, but I think is probably more important than these other things like the staffing pattern and how often the team meets, the philosophy part, the choice and the recovery pieces, uh, I hope are sort of conveyed in the practice of the uh, clinicians in this video. Okay. You gotta be out there. You gotta be involved. You know, the idea of ACT is to really help people reintegrate into community. We'll do whatever it takes. We're not doing treatment to someone. We're like part of the treatment. Hey, let's go. Hey, yeah. That's what it said to you. It was, we told them the answer is why. Each team member is familiar with each participant so that any service can be provided by anyone on the team to any participant on the team. <laughs> the ability to do this happens through the morning meetings. Okay then, let's get moving. Okay. Uh, ben was seen on 420 for two hours. Arthur escorted him to the doctor. Follow-up on 4, 514 for follow-up. Every morning we start at 930 and meet for an hour and each participant is reviewed. Rollins was seen on the 27th, 20 minutes. Tom um, saw Rollins in the office for medication support. Any attended photo group will continue to come to the office. Seen on 54 for medication support. That was already read. There's also the lock um, on his door. Harry suggested before they go and change the lock or someone else goes that we should try WD-40. So there's WD-40 in that bag on the door. The team is responsible for directly providing housing and treatment and support services to participants. Everything from mental and physical health care to support with employment to helping people integrate into their community. Augustine participated in the cooking group by chopping some of the vegetables. He looked really good yesterday. And he's going to the assessment part on Monday. He's not actually going to the truck driving school no. visit assessment. Okay. No. All right, good. He looks very... He also met with Bonnie yesterday. Mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah, they worked on the resume. Great. Um, Jeanette, Tom saw her yesterday for three hours. Service coordinator visited Jeanette to assist in cleaning her apartment and food shopping. While at the apartment, I spoke with Jeanette about her, money, her many unopened medication packages in her apartment. She stated that she had not been taking her medication as prescribed and wondered if that was why she felt like bugging out sometimes. I discussed the benefits of taking medication as prescribed. Jeanette did a good job cleaning and shopping. Staff will return tomorrow to finish cleaning her apartment. A couple of nights ago, she called the emergency cell phone and was talking about wanting to go back up to New York. But then she called me back later that night and said, you know what I think would be even better is if we can go and get our nails done again together. That's what I need instead of going to New York. I told her not yeah, next right. week, but the following week we could go get our nails done. I think she's done. really appreciating the support. I think coming from the environment that I came from and doing the act, we're so much more involved in the in the person's life. But I'm happy for you. Always taking me, and then from there I'm gonna go okay. to GD classes. Okay. And then I'm gonna, and when I'm already learning, I'm gonna try to see if I can wear the EMS. So I can be right next to Randy. Oh, that's so <laughs> yeah. good, Jeanette. Look at that big bright yeah, smile. Yeah, I'm so happy. The ACT model gives people their lives back, and I like that a lot. You know. One of the ACT principles is that 80 percent of your contact is supposed to be in the field. And at this point, I believe that we're right on target with that number. We spend most of the time in the field um, either working directly with a client or trying to engage a client or trying to contact a client. 50% of the time of a team leader is supposed to be doing administrative program work and 50% of our time is supposed to be spent doing direct service with participants. Yeah, but on me no good no baila. No, it's not good. Oh. <laughs> so That's Jeff that. Weaver facing Todd Zeal. <laughs> Mentioned last night, I'll tell you that. What's the score of the, the game, you know? Jason Giambi mm -hmm. had the... Uh, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. 
Zero set. 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 Z
our first visits, I noticed she had some um, crochet thingies, uh, doilies, right? Um, and so we started talking about that, and actually I found out that it's something that she likes to do, even though she says she doesn't have any strengths or skills, and there's nothing she likes to do. Um, I said, well, who made these? And she was like, oh, I did. I'm like, well, did you enjoy that? And she actually thought about it. Like, it reminded her of that stuff that she enjoys. Through that, I was able to find locate some places where you can go, like have classes around the neighborhood. One of the problems with her is that she doesn't like to travel more than five blocks in any direction, so um, and that makes it a little more challenging. But um, you have to work where people are at. Like, in, and I take myself and I consider myself like, why would I do? I know that I don't like to be limited by anybody, and I don't, I can't imagine anybody being or wanting to be limited for anything. Like my scope of you know, traveling is a hundred miles in any direction, and that's fine. And five blocks, so that's like her five blocks. You know, there's plenty to do. Hey, Thomas, it's Arthur. I actually like Act because it, let, it lets me be more flexible and actually help people or work with people on their grounds and actually learn from them and see how they live their lives. It's almost like when someone first comes to our program, the first bit of time, and that when I say bit of time, I mean that could be different for everyone, so I don't like putting a number on it. So the first bit of time is really just leveling the playing field. We kind of have to help people get to a point where they can then move forward from there. And then from there on, you know, they're going to be good to do a lot of other things on their own. And for some people that's six months, for some people that's a year, for some people it's two years. It, it just really depends. And that's the other part of ACT that's such a great thing is that there is a flexibility in that, that there isn't this one prescription for everybody. That would never work for our participants. And that's pretty much why they're on an ACT team is because that kind of thing hasn't worked in the past. What's your role here, Dean? Well, I am the office manager. I have four tenant workers. I have Stephen here who has his master's degree in accounting and he's, a, he's an asset to this office. Um, so basically I try to motivate them, um, teach them skills so that they can find competitive employment. That's part of the role in supervising the tenant workers um, and I enjoy it a lot. And I cook for the team sometimes. I help them, you know, I'm doing the barbecue next week. I usually do those things for them. So. My grandmother's right. I pay the bills for the clients, do the budgets for them. There's this AT&T bill, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm not, I'm not on AT&T, I thought I'd give Verizon. We switched it when your phone bill was too high. Remember, remember? when your brother oh. up, we had to get you out of that because your brother had yeah. a crazy bill. So, is this being deducted from her savings? Yes, from her account. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's what, okay. Mm -hmm. So you have four checks. For we got a spare computer that we just got. I put it in the room there, and we plan. I plan to teach some of the consumers how to type and to work on the internet. I have an appointment on Monday to go to one of the apartments to set up a printer for Robert. So basically, I'm going to help him to just you know do some hands-on stuff with the computer, turn on his internet because he's very excited about that. His plan is to write a book, so he wants his office in his apartment. He's got a beautiful apartment. I don't know if you've ever been there. Beautiful. It's, it's good. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. It's nice. So basically I'm going to help him hook up his printer and teach him the computer. I think I'm going to be moving in middle of next week. <laughs> so, something like that. <laughs> so Robert, I don't have lights in the, in the, in the, in this room. And Robert has yeah. a, is going to have a computer room. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to set up your computer yeah, for you. Yeah, let me help you. Okay. Thank you. Alrighty. It's so small, and the big the screen is big, but it's, it's you know packed. the other kind where you have the big thing back here. Right, right. You didn't want that. I didn't want that. Yeah, that's what it I have. Takes up too much room. I don't want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, setting up computers. This is a first. Um, I actually haven't set up a computer yet, and I think that really, you know, you just try to put yourself in the same position and figure out what I want in this case. And I think that ultimately it is, you know, the same kind of things that most of the clients want. Okay, I'll have to figure out what this is. We have a mystery wire. A mystery wire. A mystery wire. 
Here's blue right here. So yeah, here it doesn't go here then. Nope. Is that for the speakers, Robert? No, that's Ooh. not really going to be the same. I'm trying not to twist these cords up too much. Yeah. Yeah. Or is it the plug for the, the plug. um? Is that much the plug right? for the power? Yeah. I think that one, that one goes in there. I think that is the interesting part of the job. It requires you to be able to really think on your feet and um, be able to accommodate. Yeah. It says turn off computer. You see? That, no, no, restart. You want to restart it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we there did it. Yes. I learned the first thing about computers. How to turn it off and turn it off. Oh yeah, that's essential. <laughs> The first year, the obstacle that I had to overcome was allowing the participant to have their own opinion, to say to me what they want instead of me saying, this is what you're going to do. Because in the hospital, that's what they say. This is what you're going to do. Just like in the TV commercial. <laughs> and it's all gone. Okay, everything's good. When I see guys, they're either, they're in the community walking, um, enjoying the neighborhood. Happy. Happy. All right, Robert. All right, Robert, I'll give you a call tonight. Okay. Oh, I love Robert. <laughs> For nine years, you know, he had little contact with his family. And when he said, you know, I really want to get back into contact with my sister, and around Christmas time, um, I called his sister and, you know, and she said, you know, I'd love to have him over. And he came back and he, he wanted to go shopping for his nieces and nephews. And he felt so good that he was able to buy gifts for Christmas. And, you know, he really felt happy. And I was like, this is what it's all about. We have the, the guy who's gonna come in now. This is kind of an interesting story, how we began to work with him. I was referred a woman whose name is Kathleen by Kings County Hospital and um, I met her for the first time and her affect was so flat. I mean she was like almost this like hollow person. It was really wild and we started talking to her for about five minutes and we you know, asked about family and sons and daughters and whatnot. Yeah, sure. Hi Gary, come sit down. I'm telling them about how, how you and I met because okay. it's such a good story, right? Yeah. So, um, so I met with Gary's mother, Kathleen, and we were talking, and I was at Kings County Hospital, which is a city hospital, and Kathleen um, mentioned her son, Gary, and I said, oh, well, where, where, where does Gary live? And she said, well, he's across the street, and I was like, oh, where, he must live in an apartment across the street. That's what I first thought, right? And she said, no, he's at the hospital. He's at Kingsboro. I said, oh, okay, and then I said, you know, I kind of asked her some questions about living arrangements, and she said, well, we were living together. And then I said, well, what are you going to do now if we get you an apartment? She said, well, they referred him to another program, but he'll come live with me anyway. Now, I mentioned this to the social worker at Kings County who had no idea that Gary existed. And Kathleen, Gary's mother, how long had she been in the hospital at that point when I met her? About four months. About four months. So uh, over a period of four months, the social worker who, in theory, sees their, the patients on the units on a daily basis, had no idea that Gary existed. So I said to Kathleen, I said, well, since you're planning on living together anyway, would you like for us to talk to Gary? Maybe you can get a two-bedroom apartment and like kind of make this official. Her face lit up. She was so happy. So I gave her, I didn't know Gary at all, right? I didn't know you then. I gave her, you know, my card, and I said, why don't you ask Gary to come and talk to me? Because Gary was staying at, um, at the crisis center, which is not a locked unit. It's, you can come and go as you want and everything like that. So the next day, was it, right? You came yeah. by? Yeah. You called or I came ca by? You called Cheryl and, and told me to stop by. Right, 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 right. I did right, call right. you, but I didn't get you. And then right, I, I called you back. Yeah, yeah. Because you left a message. Yeah. And then I, then I said, well, come by. And then I met, you know, this... Um, wonderful person right here okay. and um i asked him you know because i didn't want to i didn't want to just make a decision based on what kathleen said because maybe gary didn't want to live with his mother i don't know so you know i met gary and we talked and he thought it was a good idea right is that yeah, yeah, sure. and um the rest is history <laughs> in two weeks from now gary is getting teeth so this amazing smile that he has now will be even better when he has teeth 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. one o'clock today you're going and they're yeah. thinning. Uh, yeah, they're gonna uh, let me test them. Test them. And then the next day they said if it's okay, I'll take them home. Pretty amazing. Our team, Substance Abuse Specialist, provides individual and group counseling based on an integrated dual diagnosis harm reduction model. You know, if someone's not willing to say, this is why I use, because they're afraid of the repercussions, you're not going to get anywhere. So it takes people a couple of months to really realize that if they talk about this issue, what's going to be focused on is treatment and how do we prevent that from happening, not getting them out of the program as a, as a penalty to their picking up. Are there things that you've done, Jeanette, in, in your life to kind of relieve is that when I'm stressed out? You know, cow around here, huh? When I'm stressed out, my uh, friends come over, we drink liquor, I smoke weed, and then that affect me to, um, I start doing that, and that affect me to leave me in hospitals and stuff. Sometimes when I'm stressed out, like right now, I'm really am stressed out because, mm -hmm. you know, the situation, mm -hmm. I haven't sleep in there like that. But the thing is that, the thing is that, I really don't want to fall back to the bad stuff for the after Right, go. and back to the hospital and stuff. Prefer like if mm -hmm. I learn how to say no and not start, learn how to say no and do the things they like, don't, yeah. you know, I'm trying to say right. not to be a follower, be your own leader. Okay. What's helped you in terms of stress? Like, if you're in a stressful situation, is there anything that you've done in the past that's kind of worked for you to make you feel more calm or less stressed? I just call my mother. Okay. Good. Sometimes it's not a good idea. When she in a good mood, if I don't call my mother or either, I I just like to go to go visit my mother or just take a walk around the block. Talking to someone. Window shopping. Okay. Window shop. I'm gonna add window shopping because that's a good that's a good one. You guys can write these down if you want. You can add it to the list. Window shopping. Who wants movie tickets? I get to see things that the other team members do not see. I get to know how people normally are in terms of their baseline, how they are when they come in. And so when I start to see them looking a little bit different, I immediately report it to the other team members. Because that could be a sign that something is wrong. You know, and, and I, that's part of the job is to observe. What did he say about his alcohol use? He admitted to drinking. He said he had a Heineken. Um, I had, uh, Daniel had told me about it, and then he said, oh yeah, you know, I told Alexa about it, but, you know, I asked her not to tell you, and I explained how we communicate as staff, and that there are no real secrets. He was okay with that, and he continues to apologize, and we just really talked about how alcohol use could lead to bad judgment and perhaps the use of other drugs, and he seemed to get it. Yeah, he spoke to me about it also. He was just, first he was like, I, I'm just socially drinking. Like, if I go out, I'll have a Heineken, and so we talked about the pros and cons of it. If, if one of us forgets something or one of us isn't noticing something about someone, then likely there will be someone else who does notice it. Very little gets past the team. Can you put him up on the board, Virginia, to see him tomorrow? Let me make sure. Augustine Paul, 517, 15 minute phone contact with Alexa. I spoke with Paul because he missed his appointment. Complaining of fatigue, plans follow up on 524, blood work and psych treatment. And you had said that he's... I okay. talked to him on the phone. Um, he's getting discouraged about this school thing. He said, they say I need to be on a six on a sixth grade reading level. Right. Um, which I think he's having a really hard time. Mm -hmm. Definitely sounded discouraged. Okay, so you'll call that woman then. Mm-hmm. How are we going to fit all this today? Not to worry. No. All it's all, it's listen to show. It's under control. It's, it's all under control. It's going to be group slash career club slash so party. So are you right. going to just... Hey, oh, hey! Look who's here. Hey, guys. Purple! Paul, who just came here, um, we didn't expect him to come in, so he's definitely going to take someone's time for a good amount of time today. Mm -hmm. that was, yeah, that's that's not on the board. <laughs> that was, <laughs> so there's always more things going on. It becomes like a stress on me and I'm like... Yeah, I, I think that's actually a really important point that I, I suspect that some of the tiredness that you're having has to do with like the stress that you're putting yourself under and, and the hard work you're having to do. I mean, it's tiring. Everyone experiences that when they've been out of school for a while. Not to say that there's not, couldn't be something else going on, but I imagine that it has something to do with it as well. It was so stressful to me, like I was like, you know, so mad and I was trying to like, you know, just show you how the feelings mm -hmm. is, you know, I'm so mad with them because they're not giving me the chance, you well, know. something you've wanted to do for so long. Yeah, and I've been wasting my time and now it makes me feel like, you know, like I'm not worth anything. I'm like, whoa, you know. 
you're feeling like you might not accomplish that goal. Yeah, you know, that's that's the scary part for me, you know, because I want to drive a truck. I want to drive a truck or bus, you know, and I got to go through all of this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, that's part of my, that's that's a part that's depressing for me, for real. Like, that's the part that's depressing for me, really depressing. That you wouldn't know what else to do. You know, I don't know how I would react to a situation like that. Is there something you can do or that we can help you with that you think would give you a better chance of being successful? If I could get back into the tutoring. Mm -hmm. An individual tutor. Yeah, that's, that's probably what I have to really do. It's, it seems like that's really the biggest uh, issue is that it just brings your self-confidence down. And it, breaks you feel like it breaks me bad, Doc. I mean, it breaks me real bad. I mean, that's the truth. I wouldn't even sit here and try to like debate no, it I with can, you. I can tell. I've never heard you feel so down about yourself before. And what do you think you can do that would make you feel better about who you are as a person right now? Eat some food. Okay, well, we got the cooking group today. <laughs> you gonna help with that? Yeah, I'm gonna help with and that. And I think we have a little party going on. Well, hey, no, but, um, yeah. What are you making today? We're making a stir fry with chicken, broccoli, peanut sauce over rice. We're making a cucumber tomato salad. Sort of a little Thai ish. Something like that. Huh? Oh, honey. I have honey today. So how does it taste? Hey, dude, you was watching me. Awesome. Awesome. As you see, the meat is getting a little color. Give a little color in there. Another plate. Who's hungry? Stanley? Yeah. We still got to serve the guests. So, no. That's you. You're going to get some right now. <laughs> our feeling is that when someone says that they want to work, we do our best to get that person working as quickly as we possibly can. One of the keys to providing vocational services is to individualize that job search in the same way as you would individualize someone's mental health treatment. When people come in and they say, this is what I want to do, that's where you start out with. And then your responses are completely dependent on what they want. When you match someone up with a job that really is a good match for them, they tend to enjoy their jobs more, they tend to keep those jobs longer, um, and tend to have better outcomes. I worked for Kingsborough Project React for about two years and a half. And I've also been- Look for something new. Yeah, and I've also been in a training called Project Clean, and, and um, it's a seven-month training program, and I did that for 15 months because I did recently just had a child, so um, so it's kind of difficult to focus on the class when you're dealing with your child, too, at the same time. We deal with people holistically, so you're able to see how having a job is kind of inextricably related to wellness, substance abuse issues, um, so in, it really is necessary in order to be able to provide an adequate amount of services to have everyone on the team working around vocational issues and not just the vocational specialists. Okay. Okay. This is this is Cedar. He's the office cat. We let him run around outside, and he kills birds and squirrels and things like that. And then he comes back in here. And every act team should have one, right? Definitely pet therapy. <laughs> <laughs> We call it a case review team meeting. Um, it serves a few purposes for us. And to, I mean, ideally, it's a three-hour meeting, and that's really what is needed when you're at full capacity on the team, which is 68 people. Does so Bobby at all? Yeah, 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 they, yeah they call. He let the uh, tub overflow. What, what do you think it's coming from? I don't know. Is that the kitchen or the bathroom? The, the management company called um, frantic, saying the super called them frantic. She does have my cell phone. So he still hasn't opened the door. You won't let me in. Bobby's flooding the place out, and then he's oh, refusing yeah. to let her in. Yeah. So we ran over there. Bobby. I had to knock a few times. I mean, the music was on, but I didn't think it was exceptionally loud. Right. You know, for during the day, anyway. 
Hey, Bobby and Cheryl. <clears throat> Bobby, Cheryl, open the door. I don't want to have to use a key. Yeah. It's Cheryl, open the door, honey. Huh? It's Cheryl. What? It's Cheryl. Open the Ooh. door. You know who it is. Look at, look at the people. Can I come in? I'm naked right here. Well, put some clothes on. Let me come in. I'm naked. Okay, get some clothes on and then, and then you let me know. He said, I gotta take a shower now. He like, couldn't wait to get us out of the bathroom so he can get in the shower. That was it, but it, it was a, water was a, there was enough water that was going down to the lobby. Mm -hmm. That poor super. So you yeah. have to he was doing it purposely, though. I don't think he was, I didn't get the feeling that he was doing it purposely. No, I just, I think mm -hmm. he is right now a little disorganized. A little he's disturbed. really more flighty, and he said himself he's very agitated lately. I told him he was losing weight, and he got really, like, agitated about that. And he said, well, when, how do you think I'm going to eat if people are, like, you know, having sex with my woman? And I said, what do you use? Oh, and yeah. then he just, like, yeah. you got, like, that look like you were to like, It's a good place when things are going on that are that cause a lot of chaos at different times to like have a place where everyone kind of comes together and we just kind of regroup and it's like touching the stone like just coming back to what we're doing here and why we're doing it so I use that meeting for that you know we you could spend three hours really talking about two people so sometimes we do that other times we're talking about a few more people because there are several people who need a bit more attention it looks different each week and we do our very best to make sure that it happens anyone else anyone else going going all right yeah done <laughs> all right see you guys in the morning oh, oh. there was a time that i was um, moving somebody with someone here and um, we were moving i think a refrigerator in or something like that and my father called me on this, my cell phone and I said, Dad, I can't talk right now. I'm moving someone's refrigerator upstairs. And he says, you're doing what? And I said, I'll call you later. I hung up on him. So I called him that night and he said, what were you doing? I said, we were moving a new person in. I, I think, it, or maybe we're moving, we were changing apartments. Maybe that's what it was, but it was something along those lines, moving a refrigerator or a couch or something. And he said, honey, why are you doing that? What, aren't there other people to do it? And I said, no, there aren't other people to do this. This is what we do. And I said to him, you know, I've moved personally probably about 15 times since I left home. And every time I've moved, bar maybe one, my father has been there to help me move, to help me set things up. If I have to go to work the very next day, he was there to wait for Verizon to come. He was there to wait for the cable company to come. And I, you know, obviously I'm blessed enough to have that. Whereas the participants on our program aren't. And I said that to him, I said, our folks don't have that. So that's what we are for them. That's what acts about. All right, hot, yeah.